That's Mark Hancock. Mr. Speaker, it's my birthday. Happy Mr. Speaker, I was uh, in the hospital recently for 15 days, and I had zero interest in politics since I was in the hospital, possibly face facing the end of my life. And, and just a, a few minutes here in, in Parliament, I'm interested in politics again. <laughs> oh. You know, I, I, I wanted to um, — I'm not running again, I announced that. But I wanted to make a farewell speech, and that's tradition in this House, to be able to say goodbye and, and thank members of this House. And um, I have surgery coming up on, for colon cancer on May 22nd, and I thought the only opportunity is this week. And um, so I'm, I'm here to give you an update and to thank you. Um, so I, uh, I was on an election observer um, with a colleague, and I had to come back early because I was turning yellow. And um, I was very jaundiced, came back, and uh, went to the hospital after a few days, and they found that I had uh, a, a pancreatic tumor, and then they found that I had colon cancer, and then that the pancreatic cancer, which is peanut, same as uh, Steve Jobs had, that he had it spread to my lungs. Ooh. And so I'm — the prognosis, as far as the doctors are, it's, it's not great. But uh, I have a strong faith in God, and the God that created me can heal me. Yeah. Yeah, you. I want to share just a little bit of my life, and, and throughout my life, it's been it's wonderful little God moments, God nuggets, God interventions of guidance. Um, people ask me, <clears throat> why, why did you get involved with politics in the first place? And it started with a dream back in 1990. I had a dream that there was an upcoming municipal election, and I, I had a dream that I was elected out of the blue, and I had no interest in it. And um, then later that day, somebody came up to me and said, hey, Mark, I had a dream about you. And, uh, oh, really? What did you dream? Well, you ran in the election and you got elected. <laughs> well, when those little nuggets happen, you got to listen. Yeah. And so often we get busy. And so I put my name on the ballot and, surprise, I was elected. Yo. And um, that was in 1990. And I served on Abbotsford Council with the wonderful, intelligent, good-looking member from Abbotsford. <laughs> and <clears throat> and uh, I, I served there for 14 years. And what an honor. And then, and then there was um, another God moment. I was with my beautiful wife, Diane, and we were going on our anniversary. And I said, one day before I retire, I'd love to get into managing or owning an auto body shop. And I just sold the business and everything. She says, no, don't start a new business. And I, I said, oh, I'm just speaking out loud. You know, I just I love cars, and I'd like to do that. Well, that was on Saturday. Monday morning, the phone rang, and this fellow says, Hi, this is Gary down at so-and-so um, Avenue Body Shop. I, um, I want to retire. Would you be interested in managing my auto body shop? <laughs> From that, um, I then went to ICBC and then brought money into Langley and fixing up things and got known. And next thing I know, I'm running for federal politics. So, again, there's these little voices, little nuggets in, in our lives where we need to listen and uh, follow God's leading. And, and that's why I'm here. I'm just an average guy that has had an incredible honor serving with you and, um, and serving our community. I want to thank God. I want to thank my family.
that doesn't take away my time, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so, Diane and I were married in 72, so almost 47 years ago. My best friend, and we have five kids, 10 grandkids. Wow, we are so blessed. Yeah. And uh, my passion has always been the environment, justice, family, seniors, children's issues, and respecting life right from beginning to end. Dinah and I met at Trinity Western University. Whoops. That's the last page anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our weekends, I didn't have a lot of money as a student, so I would take her on a date to a senior's place and we'd play the guitar <laughs> and, and sing. And we, we just love dealing with seniors. You don't have to be a great senior, I mean a great singer for the seniors to love you. <laughs> so our, our grandkids are, well our kids, John and Jen have Carrington and Richie, and then Ryan, Eric, Carolyn with Christian, Jonah, Jeremiah, and Jacob, Nathan, and Kristen with Russell, Maya, Mark, and Will. I am so blessed, we are so blessed. Um, I've always been involved with sports over the years, and I know the importance of teamwork. You cannot get anything accomplished if, it's your, uh, if you're a lone wolf. You've got to be part of a team. And so I understand the importance of this in, in politics here too. And so this incredible team that I get to work with, my staff, I could not have accomplished anything without them. And that's Annette, Kim, Jane, Liet, Monique, Megan, and Rebecca. Please give them a thank you. The best part of the job is, as you know, is being able to help people. And uh, it's been such a blessing. We love our community and it's been an incredible honor. So I had announced that I wasn't going to be running again. I felt God was creating a new, a new chapter in my life, so I was preparing to be a chaplain, pastoral care to seniors. So <clears throat> I'm doing the studying and reading, and lo and behold, I got sick. And, and all these case studies of should, so you, should you operate or should you do palliative care? And I was honored by our leader to be given the responsibility of palliative care. And so I find myself in the hospital surprise, and I'm experiencing what it's like to face end of life. And um, so all that reading and preparation, maybe it wasn't for me to minister others, maybe it was a, a, to prepare me for this trial. And so I want to thank you so much. When, when you are first uh, given a diagnosis that you've got some serious problems, <clears throat> that they're dealing with the physical person. And there's more than just physical in us. There is the spiritual and the emotional, called psychosocial. And those were left unchecked, un unministered to. I was, the doctors were looking at my physical conditions. And, and so that is what is being ignored and is tremendously important. Um, where you're given a diagnosis and they're looking at how they're going to fix you, what operation you need, what chemo. But what about the person? the person and the family and, and the distress. So we need to encourage our medical system to make sure that they're dealing and, and providing a ministry for, for, the real, for the rest of the person. And um, I was at VGH, incredible hospital, incredible uh, physicians and surgeons, but that need was left un, unmet. I asked for palliative care and I was there for 15 days. And of the thousands of doctors, there's two palliative care physicians at VGH. And I never saw them. They, they came once while I was recovering, so I was all groggy and sleepy. And, um, and so that, that need was unmet, unfortunately. So I've experienced firsthand the difficulty of assessing palliative care. We know in statistics that it's not available to 70 to 84 percent of Canadians. And why is that? It's, it's a tragic number. It's because our system isn't designed to meet that need. You know, we're trying to fix the body. And, but in some cases, it's better not to do the heroic things, not to remove the organs and, and chemo and stuff. It, science has shown us that you can live longer and a better quality of life in some cases if you're given palliative care. 
But in that, it, that was not provided to me, th those options. Now, why is that? So the system is broken and needs to be fixed. And we just, we passed 277. And, and I hope this parliament is coming to an end, that the next parliament will make a commitment to fix that, provide leadership, maybe at a, a university chair or something, to provide leadership in Canada so we can fix this because people are le left in despair, emotions are raw, the family support is, is not there, and they're not given the opportunity for palliative care. And, and so what is the only remaining option is if it's not surgery, it's, well, maybe we should consider made. And when we, I was on the legislative committee when we discussed that, we passed that, and we came up, we had to because of the Carter decision. But we have a situation in Canada where basic needs are being not met, and people are out of desperation saying, well, I guess the, the easiest way is just to end my life through, a, through an injection. That would be the humane thing to do. But we, we cannot force people into the, in that kind of a choice. We have to provide palliative care. Yeah. So I, it, uh, I think I've got about 20 minutes left. <laughs> It's been such an incredible honor to, to work in this house. I was first elected federally in 2004, so 15 years went like that. And um, it's been such an honor. Um, none of us are here by accident. I believe that strongly. I have a strong faith in God. And um, so if, if we're not here by accident, then what's the responsibility for each of us that goes along with that? To whom much is given, much is required. And so we have a responsibility to do what's right, to be truthful, people of integrity, making Canada better, and working with one, other, one another when it's appropriate to do so. Um, I haven't always done things right. I have a very mischievous nature, as uh, different chairs of committees will, can attest to. And so I'd like to apologize for some of the problems that I've created. <laughs> The, um, but death does come to each of us, some very early, and we just said goodbye to a very dear friend, um, and he had an aneurysm, and he was gone. Ooh. And um, so God has given me some time, and it, it, I may be around for a long time, um, or I may be around for a short time. We, we don't know. Um, but I just, this is the most important part, is that um, I want to encourage each of you to love one another to encourage each other, because God loves us. Pray for one another. Pray about what's really important. Help one another. Seek God's will for you each day. Do what is right. Be honest. We're reading Galatians that the fruit of, the, of God's spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. It's all legal. It's all good. So life is precious. Life is sacred. I've been re reminded very freshly how valuable and precious life is from beginning to end. So God bless you. I love you all. I look forward to being able to serve. Until October, it'll likely be out of my constant office. But uh, to God be the glory. Thank you so much.